What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another fantasy football video. Today, we're going over a player on our do not draft list, a wide receiver, and that's DeAndre Hopkins of the Arizona Cardinals. If you guys could do me a favor and like this video before the massive amount of dislikes come in because I'm talking about DeAndre Hopkins in a negative light, a player who has won people a lot of leagues in years past. Keep in mind guys, we never dislike players, we just dislike their ADPs, and for right now, DeAndre Hopkins is just coming in a little bit too high than we would like. Before we do get into the video though, stat of the day. Yesterday's stat of the day was which running back had the most targets on third down. The correct answer, James White, Will Cozine, you got this one right. Let's see who can get today's question right. Today's stat of the day, which running back had the most amount of rush attempts on third down? Once again, that's which running back had the most amount of rush attempts on third down? Leave your answer in the comment section down below. We'll be happy to let you know who wins in tomorrow's video. Also, if you're interested in purchasing our draft package, more information can be found on that at our website. The May giveaway is ending. Today's the final day you can be eligible for the May giveaway, a Deontay John Johnson signed jersey courtesy of pristine auction by making yourself eligible today you're still going to be eligible for future giveaways but your best opportunity to win this giveaway is going to be right now with all that out of the way though let's get right into the video when throwing deandre hopkins name out there there's a level of shock factor that comes with it deandre hopkins being one of the perennial best wide receivers at the position especially for fantasy for several years now if you've been playing fantasy for long enough you probably had a championship team that had deandre hopkins on it at one point so when saying do not drive DeAndre Hopkins it is a tough pill to swallow we received similar flack when we said do not draft players like Aaron Rodgers who is coming off the board as the quarterback two a few years back and then also with Antonio Brown when he was on the Raiders but just know we wouldn't be saying not to draft him if it wasn't for good reason now to throw the word bust out there I don't think that's fair it's really tough to imagine DeAndre Hopkins finishes outside of the top 12 it is a type of offense that does have the ability to produce for fantasy but before we dive further into the offense let's talk a little bit about DeAndre Hopkins Hopkins as a player. DeAndre Hopkins has been peppered with targets throughout his entire career, an area that is actually masking one of his shortcomings as a receiver. Off the bat, it's hard to imagine Hopkins having any shortcomings being a premier receiver in the league, but in fact he does. He struggles in the area of yards after catch. This has been a trend you can see throughout his entire career. Even recently, in 2019, he did finish as the wide receiver 5, but ranked 27th in yards after catch. Date that back to 2018, it wasn't any better, 36th in yards after catch. And if you actually look at the splits of his yards after catch per reception it gets even worse he's able to throughout the season produce top 36 numbers in total yards after catch but that's done through many targets in many receptions if you take his yards after catch per reception in 2019 there was nearly 250 players that were able to average more yards after catch per reception than Hopkins did and what does that tell us it tells us he is a volume player he's not the type of player to take a slant to the house you're not going to see big 60 yards touchdowns regularly from Hopkins those are few and far between so in order for him to produce high-end wide receiver production it's going to come through massive volume the lack of production in this area is not a factor that can be blamed on the play of the quarterback position yes DeAndre Hopkins has had very poor quarterback play throughout his career but Hopkins has also played consistently weak in that area despite having many opportunities with many style of play at quarterback to his credit though Kyler Murray is one of the better quarterbacks that he's had throwing him the ball since entering the league but that's exactly why a lot of people are quick to inflate the ADP of DeAndre Hopkins without giving the overall situation much more thought than that. It's not an exact science comparing rookie production like we saw from Kyler Murray in 2019 to compare it to what we can expect for 2020, but if we go off the numbers from last season, the expected fantasy points produced on a per target basis from Kyler Murray isn't all that high. He ranked 16th in air yards last season, 21st in yards per attempt. Both figures fell shy when compared to Watson who ranked in the top 12 in each of these areas. It's not like we can expect massive improvements in this area. It's not like they added a player like Deshaun Jackson or John Brown. No, they added a possession receiver DeAndre Hopkins who doesn't excel in these areas either. So if you insert a volume based receiver on an offense where the quarterback isn't pushing the ball down the field at an exceptional rate, the volume that's going to be needed from DeAndre Hopkins is once again going to be high as he heads into the 2020 season. Part of the reason why Kyler Murray's yards per attempt and air yards are a little bit lower is because one of the main targets in this offense is the rusher out of the backfield. So let's talk a bit about target distribution. Arizona did a phenomenal job in 2019 at spreading the ball around evenly. 
both Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk did end the season with over 100 targets. Fitzgerald did play in three more games than Kirk, so Kirk did slightly outpace him on a target per game basis, but the difference was negligible. They also did throw the ball to the backfield over 100 times. Between Drake, David Johnson, and Chase Edmonds, they compiled 136 targets, transitioned that into 98 receptions, something we can definitely see as an area of remained focus for the 2020 season, which is why we do love Kenyon Drake, and don't get it mistaken if Kenyon Drake does go down, this isn't going to impact the overall volume going to the running back position. Chase Edmonds, as the current backup, is more than capable of receiving out of the backfield as well, catching 12 of 21 targets for 105 yards and a receiving touchdown in 2019. So what is it that we can take from that? What we do know with the information given to us is that this team spreads around the ball very effectively. That's a risk factor for DeAndre Hopkins. While he is going to come in and almost guarantee work as the top target in this offense, is it possible? for us to guarantee the level of volume he needs in order to pay off his draft capital? That's tough to say. Hopkins' five-year low in the target department is 150 targets. That's massive. Nearly 50 more targets than what the leading receiver on this team garnered in 2019. Is 150 targets possible from Hopkins? Yes. Is it likely? Not quite. It's definitely not a given. He will demand top coverage, and he's never had the level of competition behind him pushing him for targets like they do have in Arizona say what you want about Larry Fitzgerald being old and Christian Kirk not really emerging yet but both players in their right can get the job done if the volume is sent their way the result last season though even with 100 targets was very subpar fantasy performances neither of these players could realistically be trusted starting in your lineup on a week-by-week basis so if the target market share is no way guaranteed to help DeAndre Hopkins this season the only other way he can make up the production would have to be through the touchdown department touchdowns inherently are always fluky so betting on that's a gamble in itself Kyler Murray himself also rushed the ball in the red zone the third most amount of times in the entire league last season while also ranking 20th in red zone completion percentage so unless he improves in these areas or the coaching staff transitions some of those rush attempts over to pass attempts which is possible with DeAndre Hopkins now on the roster but with things remaining unchanged this is also an uphill battle for Hopkins as well we know it's still possible for Hopkins to have those bad seasons when it comes to his touchdown percentage 150 targets in 2016 only netted him four touchdowns last season another 150 targets seven touchdowns pretty underwhelming so to bank on that as your saving grace for making this fantasy pick work out and being a value it's not a smart bet to take the final factor which is arguably the most important factor which we've obviously mentioned but didn't hit it directly it's transitioning teams has a major impact on wide receiver production in year one historically and we've seen it impact the best of them I mean just think about Odell Beckham last season what was he able to accomplish for Cleveland Odell Beckham while we hadn't seen his best years for a bit of time we still know he has way more in the tank than what he was able to show on the field in 2019 Odell Beckham while on the New York Giants posted no fewer than 15.4 fantasy points per game in any season as a pro that's an extremely respectable number but heading into Cleveland in year one while he did eclipse 1,000 receiving yards he was only able to put together four touchdowns and his fantasy points per game were just over 10 so two-thirds of the typical production expecting from Odell Beckham at the low points of his career and with many people often alluding to well DeAndre Hopkins won't be able to have such significant coverage because there's going to be Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk on the field. Well, Odell Beckham also had Jarvis Landry there who outproduced him in his second year as a Cleveland Brown. Jarvis Landry put together nearly 1,200 yards and caught six touchdowns to Odell Beckham's four. But don't get him mistaken, Jarvis Landry was no success in year one in Cleveland either, even with the same quarterback throwing him the ball. 149 targets, Landry didn't even crack 1,000 receiving yards. The touchdowns, four, just like we saw with Odell Beckham in year one as well. This isn't an outlier, guys. Allen Robinson, another player we have ranked inside the top 12 at the receiver position this season. Year one in Chicago, couldn't crack 800 receiving yards. And did we mention Odell Beckham last season did receive a sizable target market share? 133 total targets went Odell Beckham's way. And the skill sets between Odell Beckham and DeAndre Hopkins are vastly different. Odell Beckham is the type of player, if you give him a slant route with some open field, he can take it to the house. But he did have struggles in that area last season. Obviously, the timing and reporting 
rapport between Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham, it wasn't fully there. And it's something we become accustomed to see when it comes to veteran wide receivers joining new teams and new offenses. That's right. It happens to the best of them. DeAndre Hopkins, while he is classified as the best of them, he's not immune to this major risk factor. Now, with all this being said, this doesn't make DeAndre Hopkins completely undraftable. Remember, we do not dislike players. We dislike their ADPs. There's always a player who can fall to a spot in the draft where even if you find them overvalued, if they fall far enough, they can actually become a value. Right now, though, you're paying for all the risk with DeAndre Hopkins. He's currently ranked as the wide receiver five on Fantasy Pros. I've definitely seen him drafted as early as wide receiver three. And to us, that just sounds completely crazy. You're paying for all the upside. You're not factoring in any of the risk. And we can't stress enough the importance of how valuable it is to hit on these early round picks. You need to target safety. Ask anyone who drafted Odell Beckham last season. If they did manage to make the playoffs, it was an uphill battle the entire time. Anyone who owned DeAndre Hopkins last season can even attest that through the first eight weeks of the season, he was hurting your team more than helping it until he really started to pick things up through the second half. He still only finished as the wide receiver five, which is exactly where he's being drafted right now. And that's with everybody fully aware of the risk factors surrounding him. When we're in this area of the draft, there are definitely other players we are targeting. To find out more on that, go to our website, check out our rankings. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. We really did hope you enjoyed. How about you hit that like button? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.